So my name is Alicia Aird, and I'm here with my colleague and the CEO of Sonova, Chad Fraser. He's also in the chat. You'll hear from him a bit later. Um, just to let everyone know why we're here. We're here to um, go through a comprehensive run through of the Terra app, discuss how online payments would work, discuss how the app could actually be beneficial to your small business and how to create products and sell products with an app. So we'll run through from creating a business to actually selling a product on the app. Before we even get into the full process of running through the app, um, I'll just let you know that we're from Sonova. So we're a local software engineering company, completely homegrown, full Grenadian. We developed Tether as a response to the COVID-19 situation with checking in to places. So you won't have to write your names and forms. That's, that was the or original idea behind Tether. But then we realized that this is valuable information that, that small businesses can use to market and to build their brands. So we thought we would expand it into our online marketplace as well. And that's why we came up with Teda. So now I think I can introduce you to the CEO of Sonova, Mr. Chad Fraser. Chad, can you say hello? Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, we are excited about introducing you to Sonova Pay and Teda. Now, everything that we've done with Teda and with Sonova, and with Sonova Pay is about serving small businesses. We we treasure artisans, you know, the the the, the young entrepreneur who's who's trying to create something. And we think that one of the challenges we saw, and us being a small company ourselves. Um, and, and with Alison and many uh, many on the team being art artisans themselves, we saw that there is a huge gap in terms of um, um, infrastructure. Um, and here we, we're speaking directly to payments solutions, um, um, online shopping cart so solutions that are specifically tailored for small businesses. That's easy to use, that's mobile because we know a lot of small businesses, they're on the road, they're, they're painting, they're making soap, they're making things there. Um, I, I saw somebody in Tai Chi, they're, they're, they're trying to build customers and really trying to, to, to dabble and try and trying to figure out the complexities of the technical things related to putting your business online. It's, it could be burdensome. So we started off creating Teda um, as a, as a an online marketplace, an e-commerce platform tailored specifically for you. And um, so initially we, 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 we had it as a, a catalog. So you could show your services, show your products. And a lot of you were asking for um, the ability to collect payments. And um, we, we worked um, hard behind the scenes to try and establish the right partnerships to make it happen. And um, I must say that in our testing, we, we've, we, we are able to pull it off. And you are the second phase in that, in that you, we've done, we've done our bit internally. Now we want to get some of the, what they call early adapters, you know, people who would, who would go on early and, and give feedback and so forth to start using it and give us feedback, right? So we still, um, that's what we call it a beta launch. And that's why we only selected a few of you, handpicked a few of you to, um, to, to be a part of it. Um, we, we, we want to, um, our, our goal is to be able to support almost any small business. So after, after you, you start using Tether, spread the word to your other, I know most artisans, no other artisans. <laughs> so we wanted to spread the word and really be our ambassadors because we're trying to create something here that we think would help change your business in a, in a very positive way. All right, so thank you again for agreeing to be a part of the beta with us. Um, and let me warn you, um, initially it would be many, a lot of, a lot, a lot of it would be very manual, um, but we're hoping to 
automate a lot of it as we as we develop the platform. All right. So again, I thank you again, and um, I look forward to to seeing your questions and hearing your your contributions at the end. All right. Um, thank you for that, Chad. Um, can you just go into how the the whole Sonova Pay platform really works and how it integrates into Teda? Okay, sure. Or, or even what it is, because we don't. Know yeah, it. yeah. So Sonova Pay, right? Um, as I said, is a response to to um, some of you wanting to process debit and credit cards, all right? So it's a separate service from Tether, all right? Ultimately, right now, the only integration we have is with Tether. However, over time, we would integrate with more other digit, other other um, e-commerce sites and platforms. But our concern right now is a small um, entrepreneur. So you sign up for it. Um, you sign up for Sonova P. You get an account. Um, once you have an account, initially, like right now, how it how, how it would work is that we would send you a token via email. Right. A lot of it would be happening over email until you get to log into the portal. Um, and we, we we really wanted to get it to you quickly, so that's why we didn't wait to develop a whole portal to get you get you onto the platform. All right, so you you get your token. A token is a long text. It's like a long um, message. It's supposed to be very secure. It's not something you you would be advised to share with anybody, but it 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 it's what you would use to put into Tether when you when you're going to configure your payment options in Tether, right? So um, so essentially, yeah, you get your token, and then. Um, almost magically, <laughs> well, we do all the hard work already, you will be able to start collecting payments. Now, once you get payments, once you collect a payment, then we would send you a report daily with all the payments that you received um, for the day. Um, and, and, and then we, we, we will do a weekly checkout. Um, over time though, what we want, to, what we want to allow is for you to be able to check out Anytime after this, the same day. So, if we, so, for example, if you receive a payment today, or or um, once we launch officially and you have your portal, you'll be able to see. Okay, I want to redraw all the monies that were collected um, um, over the last um, prior two days or so. But we want to leave give no more than about two or three days window within which you could start collecting out your money, because um, you know the banking takes a while to transfer when you when you do the NFT. So how it works, we receive the monies, all right? And they say there is strength in volume, all right? So because um, it's so difficult um, as, a, as a small business to get that whole thing set up with the banks, the banks expect it to have a certain volume of transactions, all right? So what we're doing is eliminating that for you and we are going collectively, all right? We're collecting the monies on your behalf and then um, through our portal, you could just say you want to draw it down straight to your account. So you as a small business, you, not, you would not be required to have uh, a merchant account. You could use a normal bank account. And then once you, you go into that portal, or you just um, you initially be weekly, we send the money across to your normal bank account after deducting our 5% um, our um, com um, um, commission. That's, that's the rate we were able to negotiate. All right, now we're hoping over time we'll be able to bring that rate down. Um, but since we're just getting started, that's the best we could, we could have negotiated. Um, so the idea is to really give you the power to receive. So the idea is you receive the payment, you'll see you um, weekly, you will get whatever funds we, we would have collected on your behalf um, up to two days ago. So two days ago and beyond, <laughs> we'll, collect, we'll be able to send that to you um, directly to your account, no matter which bank you deal with. Now you must be dealing with a bank, not credit unions. We're using the, the ECCB's um, automated clearinghouse, the ACH system. So essentially what is a free service provided by ECCB. That's why we don't charge you a transfer fee because we don't pay a transfer fee once you're dealing with a bank, all right? So yeah, that's how, that's how essentially how it works. Um, as I said, we try to get it to you quick, 
quickly, so it will be a little rough. But what we've, based on what our testing, we are able to successfully receive your payments, we have to transfer your payments to you um, very smoothly. I think the, 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 the next stage is coming from today and after we finish the, the beta testing would be for you to be able to log into your portal and in real time see your transactions. But for now you would see your transactions in a daily report that we will send to you via email. All right, so again, I would take um, questions, uh, I guess, after the, the, the official presentation. Now, Alisa um, would have sent out the form for, Teda, for the Sonova P um, registration form. You need to fill out your form. You need to submit um, two pieces of ID cards. Um, and you need to send, if, if you're a um, registered business, because we also cater to individuals who, who are operating a small, small business. If you're just getting started, you could actually use some of our pay to receive monies. But we need to verify who you are by you sending in two um, valid ID card IDs um, through, the, through the, um, the form. And once we verify your information, um, Oh, if, if, you, if you're a registered business, you'll be required to send in your business registration number as well, along with your business registration certificate. All right. Once we have your information, we would review it and um, we would send you a confirmation, um, sorry, an acceptance or a rejection email based on our findings. Um, you know, so we're uh, based on our findings. And then once that, that email would come with your token. All right, that you would now put into Tether when you when I, I would show you where you would put in that um, that token. All right, um, and then we would be on standby to support you because we're beta beta testing. Um, it means that the communication between us would be seamless or should be seamless because our goal is to collect the feedback from you in terms of your experience and um, suggestions for how you think we could improve the service. All right, so that's basically a synopsis of it. Um, it's risk-free to sign up. So you don't, you, don't, the, the, you don't lose anything. In other words, there is no registration fee, all right? Um, but we encourage you to, once you signed up, to try and use it because that's how we get feedback from you. Um, if, if you're not using it, then really it defeats the purpose of, of actually running the beta. So we, um, we look forward to, to working with you guys on this. All right, uh, thank you. Okay, so I, I posted the link to the sign up form in the chat if anybody needs to sign up. They could go ahead and sign up right now. Um, Chad, are we? Are we opening it to others as well? We are. I think we would not cross 20 because um, as I said, every, most, a lot of it would be very manual. We really want to you know, put the system through its places before we open it up to everyone. So we wouldn't cross 20 registrations. So registrations are limited to 20 people. Um, and we already have, I think probably close to six already gone. So maybe about 14 slots available again. So, so I, Peter? Geneda Tai Chi Connection says, I only use my NIS card. Is this relevant? You will have to use your NIS and another piece of ID. So NIS is fine, but you'll need another piece of ID as well. Okay, any- okay, So do I need to repeat the registration process? No, what we'll do is, um... you could send, Alisa, can you maybe share, share your details? So maybe you could send, send the, the missing piece of ID to you directly. I saw your application oh, come. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're all connected, so. Yeah, so let's send it to Alison and then she would, um, she would upload it um, on our end. Okay, great. Any other questions before we get into the actual um, setting up payment processes and all of that? Is everybody clear? Well, Okay, we'll sign up as soon as I'm home. Okay, great. All right, so I think we could go into actually um, setting up payment options. So let me just switch over to my phone here. Oh, um, so 
almost everyone here has, um, let me get an idea of who's here. So the, the persons on the call, do you, you have a business, you have some service or product that you're selling um, that's ready to sell because the beta is for persons who are ready to sell their stuff online. I mean, that you have something, you're ready to sell it. All you have to do is put it in Tether and market it and then you can start taking payments because that's the stage we really want you at um, because the, the, the beta would only run for about a month, right? Um, so um, we want you to be able to get up and running and accepting payments um, as soon as possible in that, in that month. Um, of, of, of beta testing. So you could, you could just show by a raise of hands who already has a developed product. Can we have a... Oops. Everyone, I believe everyone should be at that stage. Okay. Okay. All right, so we'll get into it now. So is everyone seeing my phone screen? Anyone, everyone? Let's see, okay, great. Yes. All right, so I will just go into, so this will be my, for, for those of you who haven't signed up for the app as yet. When you sign up for the app, you'll create your personal account, as in you. So that's my name, Alicia Aird. And then you can go down to my businesses where you can add a business. So then you could create a business name and we'll just call this one test for now, I guess. And now here is where you pick your industry and this allows you to show up in a specific industry of, of person. So say you work with um, creative arts. So once I select creative arts, I'll only show up on the other artists if I am a, an artist, if this is an artist, an art business. Um, so then you have your categories. This also helps um, helps you be seen, helps you be suggested to users. So if you're on another art page, yours will come up as a suggestion if you select the correct categories as well. So we'll just click Arts and Crafts. We can click Next. Then you'll input your number, your business number. Seven, three. Okay. And then you'll put email address. And if you have a website, you'll put it there. If you don't, it's fine. Because we, with each TED account, you actually create a web store as well as an app. So you get a mobile app and a web, a web store in one. So then you select your, your um, parish. Your country is already selected for you. You put in your address. I'm sure, I mean, some of y'all would have done this already. Oops. Then you would put a business description and then click submit. So from here, this is your Terra profile. It doesn't have any branding or anything like that. And you could see it says this business is not visible to users who are not personnel on the business, which means basically, the other users in Tether, the wider audience, can't see this as yet, which is a good thing because we need to add some branding and add, make it look pretty, you know? So we'll just add a logo. Oh, sorry. So to, to make adjustments to your profile, there's a couple of places you could. So we'll just go ahead and tap the Three, screen, three dots at the top right of the screen, and then we'll select upload logo. And we could just enter, we could click our gallery. And please let me know if I'm going too fast or if we need to 
move on if you've already done this, just let me know. So we could go into our gallery and we could just select a logo and it will load. So there you see, and then we could add a banner as well. So we'll just add a banner here. We can adjust it a bit. We could zoom in, zoom out. There. So we have a logo on our banner now. Now, if you have a physical location, if you have a, a location for your business that's not your house or your kitchen, then you could actually set that location within the app. So right here, it says set location. So we click on that and we go in on the map. I'll just pick a random place for now. And then we'll click assign location. Now, what that does is when persons visit the app and they look at your business, they could just click on the map and they will get the Google Maps location to show them exactly where you're located. Also, you can download your QR code where it says download QR code right here. And that will allow your visitors to check in for contact tracing purposes, as well as this could help you build an audience to remarket to. So you, you form a better relationship with your customers through that. Now, once you've done all of this, you could always go back and edit everything you've done here. You could edit the, the images, the, um, you yeah, had the location, the images. So the industry, anything that needs to be, any changes that need to be made, it can be made. So if I scroll down to the bottom here, you'll see something that says similar spots. So that's what I was talking about with the categories. So because I selected arts and crafts, I'll see other arts and crafts spots on Tether showing up in the bottom here. So below that now is posts. Now these posts go to your followers in Tether. So once people are following you on the app, they will be able to see the posts. And that way you could keep a relationship going with them. You post to them, they could comment on it, they can like it and they can also share it on social media. Now let's scroll back up to the top. Right here, we could make our business visible by clicking activate business. The customers will need to have the app if you're using it for checking in. Um, will it be required to download the app and set up as well? The customer setup process is they just have to register just like you did in the beginning. They don't have to create a business or anything like that. And that will allow them to shop in the app as well as check into your physical business. So I know you have a Tai Chi um, company. So if you want to keep track of your Tai Chi students, you can actually print out your business QR code and have them scan it for classes. And I mean, we could, we could talk about how you'll actually be able to pay online. So we'll get to that. So once you've activated your business, the other users in Tether could see it and then they could follow and interact with your business. Once it's not activated, they can't see it. So I won't activate right now because this is just a test. So I'll actually leave it like that. So then you have your, your ratings over here in the bottom bar. So we don't have any ratings right now because nobody has checked in. But let me actually get a company with ratings. So now we could, we'll see this company here. So at the very top, we have the followers. And we also have this very 
important badge right here, this blue badge, you see it says verified. That is the badge that allows your, your business to show up in the similar spots. So even if you have the categories, you still need a verified badge to show up in similar spots. And automatically we will verify everyone here once they've signed up for Sonova Pay because the verification is just to let our users know that you are a legit business and we've, we've checked you out and we see that you're an actual business place. Okay, any, any questions? Am I moving too fast? Please let me know. Okay, so we'll get to um, ratings. So ratings is where your customers will leave reviews on your business. So they can select um, a star rating as well as leave writing ratings, a review. So then we'll go to insight. Insight is where you will see everyone who has checked into your business by scanning the QR code. Sorry. You can select multiple tags once you're in an industry. So you can select multiple categories in an industry, you can. Uh, just make sure that they're relevant categories, but you could go ahead and do that. So here you can see we're on the visitors tab. So you'll see all the visitors that this business has scanned and has checked into this business. The next tab we have is followers. So these, this is your community. This, this is the list of people when you post, that's who you'll be posting to and that's who you want to keep an engagement with because this is your, what we call a warm audience. This is your warm audience. This is people who have engaged with you before and are willing to see more information from you. So then we have, in the next tab, we have activity. Now, I don't have any, um, I don't have much um, data on activity because this business is not a physical business. It doesn't have a, a physical store. So the QR code is not being used constantly. So if the QR code was being used constantly, you would see a graph populate here. But what I can see is posts. So I know I've made 10 posts on this page in total. And you can see I've listed eight products. And you can actually see the views, the amount of views your, your, your page has gotten and the amount of impressions. And that's impressions is the, the people interacting with your page in some way, shape or form. Yeah, um, Alisa, can I just add a little bit to your... To... For sure, for sure. No, what, our, our goal is to continue building on this, um, the insights um, and the, the activity. Um, so when, when, when you start selling products, then we will show you, um, we would add um, other types of analytics, like the financials. So we would have a separate tab for financials. You could see best performing products. Um, you could see the revenues collected and so forth and so forth. So eventually we would add to this. Now, this didn't look like this when we started. It only had today's traffic and, and this week's traffic. Then we added these below. So we'll continue adding on here, um, especially now as we now moving into being a full-fledged e-commerce platform, we will provide um, insights into your financials and so forth as well. Okay, um, so... Iran has a question. Is the QR code strictly for contact tracing or can it be used just as a quick connection to the Tether app and business page slash web store? It can be used for a quick connection if that's the way you choose to use it. If you don't have a physical business, I mean, it's entirely up to you. It would be a way for your customers to get to your Tether page quickly just by scanning your QR code. Chad, mm. what do you think? Yeah, we can, we can but there, there is, um, 
we, we intend to build on the whole QR code scanning part um, to, to products and, and to your store as well. So just like how you have your QR code for checking in, um, we, we could add one that would take, take people directly to your web store. Or if they have the app already, um, it would take them to the app instead. Um, but we would build on it. I really like the suggestion, Alisa. Um, it's a good suggestion, Aaron. Um, But we intend to have it for the products. So if you want, for example, on a, on a printed, um, so some material you have printed or on the, the packaging for your product or so, if you want um, to embed your QR code, so somebody who come across your packaging could just scan it and, and be able to buy it online or someone who come across some brochure or flyer wants to be able to just scan it and then be taken directly to your product online in Tether, then this is something that we, we really, um, we are putting some serious thought into building out. Okay, and his second question was, do we have the ability to link existing social media accounts to Tether app? Okay, so for now, what we have is we, actually I can show you, we have the ability to share posts from Tether to other um, products. <laughs> products? Yeah. Oh, sorry. We have the ability to share products. So if we go into a store here, which we haven't got to yet, but we could actually, oh, Chad, I think you would have to, somebody else would have to do that. But you can share to social media what you've created. Um, as for in the Lincoln, we did create um, a link for your web store that you could use as your web site in a way. So yeah, your web store, you could use your web store to link on your Instagram account, for instance, or you could use it wherever it says website and on these social media platforms, you could actually put that that link as your website, so then people know where to find your shop. And Ron, if you couldn't mind, and um, maybe you could unmute your mic to answer. Um, what did you have in mind when you said um, connect to other social media platform? What kind of integration you had in mind, or you, you, would you like to see? Um, yeah, I was referring to, you're talking about sharing the Tether app on your existing social media, I was talking about the other way around. Instead of just doing posts, maybe I could share an existing post from Instagram or Facebook on the Tether app. That's okay. All right, thanks for that. We we'll take it. We we'll, we we'll, um, put some thought into it. I share it with the team and, and see if, what the thoughts are. Thanks for that, Aaron. No problem. Well, but to answer your question, no, we don't have that yet. But it's um, it's an interesting idea. Uh, secondly, will the financial records be stored securely for long-term applications such as income tax? Yes. Yes, so it will be stored in security. Now, let me tell you about security on, on Tether. We, we approach security in, um, in three, we look at security in three ways, right? We look at security of the data on your phone. Right now, Tether is uh, it, it, it is um, it does support offline um, capabilities, some capabilities offline. So, for example, you could scan and you could do a bunch of other things while offline. So, we're, we're encrypting the data while it's on your phone, we are encrypting the data while it's being sent over the internet, over a secure um, HTTP, um, over a secure channel. All right, so nobody, even if you're on a public Wi-Fi, a public um, Wi-Fi, and um, the admins of the Wi-Fi want to to peek into what's been sent, they can't see your traffic. Um, so if you if you're um, if someone is making a payment, or if someone is um, if you collect monies or all these records, when it's been sent back to our servers, it's it's encrypted. And finally, we took. The, the, the best industry best practices in securing data while it's at rest on our servers. 
So things like passwords and all this data is, is encrypted at rest um, while it's stored. And, um, um, and we follow some of the industry best practices in, some of our, in terms of our server management and, and so forth. So we try our best um, and we'll continue implementing these standards as they're updated to ensure that we, we your data is secure. But it will be stored forever in Teda. So if you want to reference it um, later on, you want to go back and look at all your orders you received and so forth, you can go back in and, um, and have a look at it. In terms of the analytics and um, getting the summaries and the statements and so forth, we don't have support for it yet. Um, but I'm sure um, as we build on the platform, um, we would um, look at uh, building out that side of it as well. Because it is very important for small businesses to keep, um, you know, very uh, organized financial, especially if you're going to look for loans and, and other things. Um, he's also asking a level of encryption. Um, Sorry, I'm not really a tech inclined person. I'm I'm just curious. Okay, I'm I'm not familiar with with it all. Maybe I'll refer to one of my um, other team members and because I'm, I mean we have a diverse team, so not me alone. So I could probably ask um, behind the scenes um, what exact type of encryption we we do. Okay, so I mean if that's all the the questions for now, we could move on. Excuse me. So we were at Insights, so now we'll move on to personnel. So I would imagine that eventually some of y'all may want other persons to manage your Tether page or your Tether business rather. So you can actually add business owners by selecting personnel, by add business managers, owners, anything like that. So you could just select the um, the orange button and you would put in their number and you'll see whether they're owner or not, or whether they're admin, and then you could go ahead and add them to your business. Okay. So now that we have that covered, we can go to the e-commerce part of it. So we'll go back up here to our menu, three little dots on the top right. So the first thing we see here is the web store, but we'll come back to that. Following allows you to follow your, um, your own business. Hang on just a second. Sure, okay. So we've added, And now we can go down to the bottom of the list. Here it says enable e-commerce. So we'll click on that. And that allows us to set up our payment options. So now you can add products to your, to your catalog so persons could purchase. So for now, we have to add our payments and delivery options. So we could go ahead and click the um, orange plus sign. So we can select payment option. You see you have debit slash credit card as well as pay on delivery. So if you would like to use, we'll, we'll go to debit and credit card because that's what we're really here to focus on today. So we'll click on that one. So this right here now where it says key and it says required, this is the key Chad was talking about earlier. Once you sign up for Sonova Pay and you're approved, you will get your key. And this is where you place your key within the app to start receiving payments. So here where it says notes, you can add additional information for your customers. If you have any, if you, only take credit cards for the, I don't, I don't, whatever, whatever notes you would like to put there for your customers, you can. So, and then also you could select pay on delivery. 
which allows your customers, if they aren't using credit card, they could use cash and you just exchange cash in person. Again, you could add notes if you only take cash payments below a certain number or above a certain number. And then you could go ahead and click save. So now we've created our pay on delivery option and now we'll slide to the next tab, which is delivery. So we have to pick our delivery options now. So again, we'll click the orange button, select delivery option. So we have a couple options because we're trying to make it so that we cater for everyone. So we have delivery and delivery would mean that you as a business would deliver to the person's address. Now that delivery, Tether does not do delivery. So you will have to, you as a business will have to set up your own delivery um, service. But they can, the users in Tether can select whether they want you to deliver or not. Um, they can also, select, well, you could select pickup. This is, these are the options that you want to have available for your customers. So you would pick whatever options is suited to your business. So we have pickup, then we have dine-in for restaurants. If you would like to order in advance and then dine in at the restaurant. We also have curbside pickup. So we'll just select delivery for now. Now, if your delivery comes with a cost, you can add in that cost here, let's say $10. And then here we have <coughs> delivery estimation time. So this is where you could let your customers know when they can expect their delivered, delivery to come in. So it could be within 30 minutes, it could be within days, weeks, a month, months, whatever your delivery time is. So you will, you'll set that range on your own. And then of course you could add notes, any changes or anything like that. Then you click save. So now we have our payment options and we have our delivery options. So now we can exit. And now if you notice at the bottom, the navigation at the bottom has some more options now. So we have shopping and orders. So we're gonna click on shopping. So right here, now is where you add your products into Tether. So you can click add a product. So you'll put the name of that product. Um, let's see. I think we have, okay, let's just move this out the way. Okay. Aaron, I'm Aaron, sorry. Aaron, I'm, I'm probably going to use your product as an example. I promise I'll remove it after. <laughs> so we'll put our price in. We put our price on it. We'll say 70 EC. And then we can now add categories for the product. Just like we've added categories for your business, you can add categories for your products so that they show up in the search. So we'll put arts and crafts, we'll put household because it is a cutting board after all. And then we can click okay. And in the description, you can let people know whatever you wish to know about the product. Oh, there's a question. Okay, let me see. Can an option be made for pickup if a business does not deliver? Absolutely, yes. You can select pickup if you do not offer delivery in the app. That's your choice. We just have these options for you to pick from. So, um, yeah. Um, so you could add your description of the product. If you go in detail, you could say wooden cutting board. And then we click save. And here now we have 
the product. So now we'll need to add, sorry, my phone is being special. Okay, now we'll need to add an image to the product. Okay, Oops. let me just get it back. So we go ahead and click on the product and right here it says add right above the word cutting board. So we could click there and it will open up our gallery again. And we simply select the image we want and click upload. So once it's done, you could click close and there's your product. You can add more than one image to the same product if you want to have different angles on it or if you want to showcase your different color options, you can add more, more pictures. Mm -hmm. so, go ahead. Can I just, for one second. Now you want to, because you, you, so some of you may have different versions or different variations to your product, right? We ask that you, at least for now, because it's something that we've considered adding and we actually had in the original design to support variations of the product, but for now, this specific um, cutting board, you should leave it on its own. So somebody, you don't, so you don't have this cutting board with a different one on the same as the same product because if somebody's ordered, you know which one they want, right? So the advice now is that you put them as separate. So all the images there should be of the same product, right? One of the things you don't want to do is confuse um, customers when they go onto your page, where they're not sure what what exactly they're buying. All right, so how is that we um, send you your notifications? Yeah, um, why do you think you want to- um... I want to send somebody the um, meeting code. Okay, let me oh. see. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. One thing that you, um, so yeah, so you want to do one product per item, right? Just be very clear on it, right? And also you want to make sure that your photos are very clear. So for example, if you're selling a cutting board, you shouldn't have it next to something like a waiter, for example, all right? That might look similar to a cutting board and it confuse the users. Also try not to make your background noisy, make it very clear, make it make the image, make it so that the image is very clear and the subject of the image is what you're selling. Very, very important. Um, and then we're gonna, we're gonna share some standards around um the photos that you choose to upload and so forth as a guide to you um so that you could you could um, pick the right photos um that would that would make a really con compelling case to some of your potential customers okay all right so i think we had one question also can ones one selection more than one option. Okay, I guess, can more than one payment option be selected? Yes, you can add as many payment options as you offer as a business. These are just options to choose from that you, okay, that you can pick as a business. Okay. So now we could move on. So now we have your, um, your product set up. And under it, this gray bar right here lets you know that your product is not published as yet. So similar to the business, you can see it, but it's hidden from the rest of the Tether users. So if you'd like to make edits or if you'd like to create it and save it, until you're ready to publish it. Say you're running a campaign and you want to get all the work that you have to do out the way. You could upload your, your products into Tether and then when, say Mother's Day special, when you have a Mother's Day special, then you could publish these products, but they would have already been in Tether. So that's, <clears throat> that's the purpose of, of this. And again, I'm not going to Publish this one because we're just running a test. Alicia, a, a quick question for Chad. Um, are we only allowed to have one price per product as a result of 
you know you're saying you can only post one product yeah for now um in in so well, let me tell you, I'll give us think pickers of, of what's coming you have we have support for product groups right so where you could say that these two products are related they are variations of the same product so we we have um conceptually um the ability to have product groups so let's say i, I know in your on your on your, on your um, tether page um you have mood on one of these boards right so now you could add them separately right um but um maybe sharing the same description but then you have that is a group right so you have the two variations so when somebody's ordering they could pick the specific variation that they want um and and you, you would um you you would know what exactly they're ordering but okay, but all in all, all in all, every variation has to have its separate listing. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Also, if we go back to the um to the, the the product. Just click on one of the products, please. Sorry, say that again. Can you click on one of the products? Sure. Yeah. Right. So you see, if if you if you did not set up your your payment and delivery options, people would not be able to buy your products. All right. So that. Add to cart button below there would not be visible to 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 um, potential shoppers if you have not configured at least one payment option and at least one um, delivery option. So it's very important that you start off by configuring your payment and delivery options. Okay, we have a question here. Um, is it possible to change the currency you would like to receive payment in from customers or is it solely EC dollars? For now, solely EC dollars, for now. Remember we continue building on it, so, but for now it's only EC dollars. And, and um, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I saw another question there. How would it work in the virtual environment if I have um, a client in Dubai or whatever? Um, so explain what you mean by virtual environment. Um, so you're, you're teaching online. So in, yes, in relation to working online, work from home, if I'm offering a Tai Chi class virtually, the, would the app work in China or would it work in the US? Y yes, it would. In terms of receiving payment? Yes, it would. Any, any, okay. any Visa, MasterCard, I think um, um, Visa, MasterCard for sure, um, would, would we could, you could receive payments from them. Irrespective of where they're, they're, they're signing in. We actually made the app global. So the sign up process um, where you put in your phone number, it works anywhere in the world. They would receive the text message anywhere in the world uh, with the confirmation code. All right. Um, yeah. So we actually have um, some users um, in Barbados who started um, a couple of one business in Barbados who, who decided to, um, to implement Tether and it worked without us doing anything. So anywhere in the world where your customers are, they can sign up for Tether. And and um, and buy from you. Okay, so this is what your um, your store would look like. So this is your Tether Home, your mm -hmm. business account homepage. So this is what your customers will see, and then they can click to go to your store where it says more shopping, or they can click the shopping at the bottom bar, and then they'll be taken to your product store. So here they can select the product they, they would like to purchase and they can click add to cart. They could also change the quantity if they like. And here they can share, um, you could share your product on Facebook. That's remember the social yes. part. So right here to the bottom right, there's a share option. So you can share to WhatsApp, Twitter, Facebook, and then there's also more options. So. Now you can select whatever app you wish to share it on and you can share it there as well. So you can go ahead and add to cart. 
And there at the top of the screen, I've added it to my own card. So at the top of the screen, you'll see your card. So it says I have three items in my card right now. So you can just click on that. And here you'll see, and you can go ahead and check out. <clears throat> So right here, it says delivery is a dollar. So just put the dollar in and then you could put your contact information here and directions if you may need it. Now here's where the customer can pay with cash or if they choose to pay, pay with card, they can as well. So once you click, click on, sorry, can't speak. Once you click on debit and credit card, you can select the card which you choose to use and you could put in that data right here and then you will use that card to check out. You want to try adding a card? I'm not, not checking out, but just adding a card. Maybe, um... Um... Oh, you do a random card, I guess, because um, we won't be charging it, so. Okay. You know, you should actually take the first couple of digits in one of the valid cards, like a Visa card, so that it gets your, um, the, the, detect the card type. Oh, okay. Um, I actually don't have anything, so I wouldn't even know. <laughs> Valuable digits of a digit do visa card right now. You do you have one? Yes. Um, put in start it with four four one zero nine eight three zero and put in whatever you like after that. Okay. And And then let's just say that. So we can click next. Then we'll put in address. Okay, so now you see the, the card has popped up there. Um, Chad, can you just go ahead and explain a little bit? I, I want to add some money yeah. to the um, conversation. Okay, sure. So how this works, right, is that you um you could add more than one cards, the as as a buyer, right? Um, and we save the card. We don't save it on our servers. We save it on the user's phone in an encrypted database. Um, but with the CVV. Um, we only use it for the first couple transactions. So let's say, for example, you're always buying things on Tether, you wouldn't need to re-enter your CVV every time. However, if you give Tether a break for a week, let's say you didn't purchase from Tether over a week, then we remove your CVV um, so that, um, and the next time you, you, you go on to order, we would, um, you would be required to re-enter your CVV card for security. All right, but the idea is when someone is shopping, if they're actively shopping on Tether, they basically just choose the card here and then they go next. Um, now, if you had notes and, and so forth, because I was going to click on pay on delivery. Yeah. Oh, no, so we didn't have any notes on these. But um, I didn't put any notes in. So. Yeah, well, yeah, so you have cash, just cash here. I yeah. guess that's it. Yeah, but you could put the notes and people could see what, you know, what whatever notes you leave there for them. But go ahead and, and debit. And um, so yeah, you have a summary of your your um, your order, um, including the delivery the delivery charge of one dollar, and your your phone number because remember you're expected to fill out the form when you are filling out when um, when you choose the delivery option, and then you have of course the payment option that you you choose. All right, and then you could go ahead and place the order. All right, 
So she's both the buyer and the seller, but the, the seller will receive a notification as well. So the seller received this notification. She, they wouldn't have canceled, but because she's the buyer and the seller, she has all the options for the buyer and the seller, right? But um, I said, maybe you show them how they get to the orders and so forth. Okay, sure. So <clears throat> to get to your orders, you will go at the top right in this little box right here, right next to the shopping cart is the, the box. So you click on that and that will take you to your, your orders. So now this is my order as me as an individual. So I'll go ahead and switch it to the company. So your list is not gonna be this long, but I have a lot of businesses. So then right here, I can see a minute ago that Alicia Aird has ordered from me. So now I can go, at, go in and click on that order and I can see the details of that order. So now <clears throat> I can accept that order or I can reject it. So if by mistake you, did, you didn't take down a product that was already sold and then somebody put in an order for it, you would probably want to reject that order because that product is out of stock or something to that nature. So once the order request comes in, you accept it <clears throat> if everything is okay and it'll let you know you've accepted it. And from there, you can keep the communication going with your customer by letting them know the status of the order. So now you can see you're now dispatching that order, which means the order is ready for delivery or whether it's pickup or whatever the case may be. So you're just letting your customer know that the order is ready. So then now in this case, we, we selected delivery. So we could go ahead and say deliver which means now the order is complete. I've delivered it. I've received the funds. The transaction is finished. Did I miss anything, Chad? No, no, you did not. The only thing I want to mention is that the customer would receive notifications whenever um, the, the, the seller updates um, the status of the order. All right, um, so it, it's really trying to um, keep them in the loop uh, in terms of what's happening with their order and so forth. Right, so here we're back at the, the orders. So this is where you'll see all your orders coming in, previous, uh, all active orders. So we're on, on the active tab. So here's where you'll see <clears throat> all active orders. So now that I've refreshed it, you see there's only one active order. The one we just did is now gone into the fulfill category. So we'll get to that. So after active tab, we have rejected tab, which is the orders we would have rejected for whatever reason. And then now these orders canceled. I believe these are the orders that the customer themselves have decided to cancel or along the, the, the process, you as a business may have canceled it. Again, Chad, just let me know if I'm on the right track here. Yeah, no, you're okay. Once once it's canceled by, by either party, no, the order can only be canceled when it's at certain stages, all right? So the, the customer could cancel an order before it's accepted by the, um, by the seller, all right? Um, and the seller could reject it up, and up to this point as well. Now, if for some reason during the, during the process, um, either party, um, Sorry, the, the, the seller has the ability to, um, to cancel then. All right, so if for example, the customer wants to cancel, they need to contact the seller. Um, 
we have a phone call or WhatsApp or whatever mechanism and um, and have it cancelled. All right. Until so, we have a better, a better way to send a cancellation request and based on where the order is, you know, we, we, we support, we, um, we facilitate it, but that would be totally up to the seller. Okay. Iran is asking, what does the customer invoice look like and do they have an option? The customer could go back and, and view these orders. Um, in terms of downloading the invoice and so forth, we don't have support for downloading the invoice yet. Um, but uh, as I said, we continue evolving in it. But for the customer record, they can. Um, so I can actually go back as a customer and review my orders. So right here, I can see my fulfilled order by Olbush. And if I click on it, I can see what I ordered and the order dates, the status, everything like that. It's right here. So we don't have a way of emailing it as yet, but that will come in time. I mean, for now, we could always screenshot and send it. Right. Yeah, the screenshot is there. Yes. Uh, okay. But actually, while, while we're on the, the topic, I have a, another question. I hope I'm not getting ahead of myself, but um, can we pull down financial information or a report or a monthly something? Um, not, well, with still of pay. Remember, we're sending you the reports, the financials, that is directly from Son of Up. So there are two ways. Um, well, eventually you'd have two, but for now, the financial reports would be what we send to you um, from, from Son of Up, um, from the Son of, Son of Up side. From the teller side, um, we would add to the insights, the insight section. We would have a more robust um, financial report in there. All right, but for now, it's, it's pretty much you tallying up on your own. Um, until we, we build all those functional these, these functionalities. And now, what's the frequency of the report? It'll be daily, and then we'll send you um, a weekly one as well. Okay. Yeah. And again, this is just because you all are the select few first people to, to have this rollout. So yeah. we're kind of hoping that you could help us fine tune these things as we go along. But uh, once, we, once you, you have access to the portal, then you could download whatever period you like, whenever you like. But um, I would say for the first month during the, the beta, um, you know, we, we, we would um, set, be sending you, I wouldn't say for the whole, whole month, maybe during the month you'll get some limited access to the portal with some functionality and then we'll continue building on it. But the ability to download your um, the financials for a period that would be um, one of the givens on on this on over pay side. All right. Um, I hope that that answered your your question. It Aaron. did. Thank you. Okay, great. So then, after the cancelled, we have the other tab which says fulfilled, and these are all the orders that have been fulfilled. So these are orders that you have delivered or the customer has come and picked it up and basically the transaction has been completed with all these orders here. So this record is there forever. All of these records are, are here so you can always look back on them. And that is the process of creating your business and creating products and having them available to sell online. So now also what we're working on, actually, before I go to that, we have also created the web version. So this is the app. And then if we click on the three dots on top here, it says web store. So if you click on that now, you can copy a link and share it with people, or you can you can click on go to web store. So this is outside of the application now. And then here you'll see your Tether web store. So this now allows your customers to look at your, your products, look at your store, 
on their computer as opposed to using the mobile app. I mean, they can use their phone as well, but it's through the browser rather than through the application. So even if they don't have the Teller app, they could still see your catalog. Uh, so now if we go back, we have a couple of things on the home page, today's feature, this week's feature, and then below that we have the categories of items on Tether. So these are items that your customers can purchase. So your items will show up in these categories depending on how many items you have and in what category it's in. And then below that is your feed. So you'll see your posts right here. So these are posts that your customers can interact with. So you see, I can like here and I can leave a comment. I could put a comment. Let's do a hand thumbs up. Right, so now we liked and we commented. So that's how you keep your community growing on Tether. You interact with the community and they will be notified when you create posts and when you have new products and all of that. Let me just mention though, your Tether community is a special community. Remember, this is a community that they would speak to very differently from how you would engage your, your Facebook audience. Remember, these people are people who um, very likely have used your services or bought from you before or know about you. And um, so we try to make it very intimate. And we continue to try and make it very intimate. So whenever you post products, you can share it to the community and um, you know, really um, bridging that gap between you and your customers. I may also mention the word Tether, or the name Tether actually means to connect. It's, it's a play on the word Tether, right? And so we, we really are keen on you, uh, on bridging that gap between you as a business and your customers, just bringing you guys closer together. Okay, I mean, now if we have any questions, you can let us know, we've been on this call for a little bit now. So if you have any further questions or again, the, um, the form to sign up for Sonova Pay is in the chat. Let me see if I can just repost that. So here's the form. You could go ahead and sign up and we will review your, your form and let you know. And from there, we could take the key, put it into Tether, and then you're able to collect payments online. And you could also share your store with your customers, let them know they can now purchase from you online as opposed to just in your store or exchange cash mm -hmm. in person. Yeah, use the opportunity to, um, to while Tether, we try to build um, a marketplace you're responsible for getting people to your store. Um, so I would encourage you to share it on your social network. Sonova, we have the habit of partnering with, with our partners. We call you, we think you guys, we consider you guys partners. So we will do some joint promotions. Um, from time to time, we promote some of the popular businesses on Tether on our, on our social media channels as well. Um, and um, so we, we, we would put together uh, um, a post or some content that would highlight our beta testers, people you could actually buy from now on Tether. We would um, put together some content and really promote you guys as well. So the beta testing comes with some free promotion from this from the Tether team, but um, it's a, we think of it as a, as, a, as a partnership. You you sharing your store um, on your platforms, and then we would do the same on ours so that we could drive traffic um, to to your um, individual stores. So, I mean, if we don't have any, any more questions, I think we could wrap it up here. If anybody 
needs any help with their Etcetera account, I believe you all have my number. You could go ahead and shoot me a message at any time if, if you have any questions about Sonova Pay or anything like that. Link. Um, what, sorry, what link do you need? Ah, okay. Sorry, let me let me post the link one more time. Okay. There you go. Okay, so that's the again, that's the link to sign up to Sonova P. So I'm wondering if if we if we, we shouldn't consider doing a Slack channel or a, or a WhatsApp group. We just the beta testers. We, that we, could, uh, we have a, a WhatsApp um, group. Okay, good. Okay. All right, then. Well, thank you all for joining. And um, we have recorded the session. So if you ever need to look back on it, I will send it to everyone here. And as well as post it on. Um, YouTube, so you can share it with other entrepreneurs that you know can benefit from using the Tether app and continue to spread the word and we will be in touch for the beta testing. I wish you all best of luck with your businesses and hopefully we could keep this relationship going. Okay. All right then, I think that's it. Goodbye, everybody. All right, then. Bye. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.